This video is a short introduction to the bouncing ball lab that you'll be doing. Uh, the goal of this lab is really to discover the idea of conservation of energy and to think about how to define energy for two different forms, a form associated with motion and a form associated with the height of, above, of an object above the ground. So in this lab, you'll be looking at data for a ball that was dropped, uh, and in this case, rather than a person's hand here, there was a motion sensor sitting here. So a motion sensor pointing down that could track the ball's location as it falls, strikes the ground, and bounces back up. That's the data you'll be looking at. So let's start not worrying about the bounce. Think about just the falling ball. So we release this ball, and as it falls downward, Take a moment to think about what would a graph of height versus time look like, and what would a graph of speed versus time look like. Go ahead and pause the video and take uh, a minute to try to visualize what you think those graphs will look like. Do they increase or decrease? Are they straight or curved? Think about that for a moment. So hopefully you have an idea in your head of what each of these graphs will look like. Here is in fact what they would look like. So a graph of height starts out high when the ball was dropped. And then this is a curved graph because the ball falls faster and faster. So each moment the amount it goes down gets larger and larger. Speed starts at zero and then increases linearly. The idea of conservation of energy is to define several different types of energy so that when they are all added together, you get the same value at each moment in time. Conservation energy is all about defining quantities so that when you add them all together, they add up to a value that is the same at every moment in time. Looking at our graph here, height decreases quadratically while speed increases linearly. So if we were to add speed plus height, we would not get a constant value. They change at different rates. So you might think, well, how do we turn the speed graph into a curved graph like height? Well, maybe we could square the speed. If we square the speed, we should get something that's curved. And so the question is, do we get something that curves at just the correct right rate so that if you did height plus speed squared, would that give you just a horizontal line that never changes value? That's what you're going to investigate in this first part of the lab, is you'll figure out how to combine height and speed by squaring or square rooting, multiplying by extra factors. How do you def combine those two quantities to make something that has the same value at each moment in time. 